This is your park. This is a culmination of th over 3,000 bits of information that we raise through the planning process, from promoters to customers to citizens to neighbors to benefactors. This is your park. We promised you when they first broke ground here that we would have this completed in less than a year. We gave the notice to proceed to Martin Brothers Construction October 20th, 2012, and we're cutting the ribbon October 19th, 2013. We want to take a little bit of time to recognize just all of the wonderful people that have helped us get to this point. We had young children. You want to talk about doing a park director's heart good. Is the very first night that we opened this up, we took the gates down. People started flooding into the Bullet Avenue, down the uh, walkway, watching the fountains, the computerized lighted fountains. And I came around the corner and found three young children soaked to the bone, running through this interactive fountain. And they didn't really care that it was only 58 degrees outside. So again, want to take the opportunity to thank all of our staff, my park and recreation staff, Martin Brothers Construction, the design team, a local design team. This is what they gave us, folks. This is amazing. My sole responsibility is to tell you today that we're going to have a tremendous number of events here, both from our nonprofit organizations. We're going to keep the costs low so that they can use this wonderful facility. We're also going to have some spectacular named acts coming here, we hope. And we're going to be working with promoters to make that happen. But also, I want you to remind you that there are a number of things that happen. Uh, with all of the things that are happening today, this ribbon cutting, the Go, Go Fest that's down at uh, Reserve Avenue, we hope that you attend that event as well. But all of the runs, all of the festivals, all of the things that make Roanoke such a special place to live, this, this facility is going to do many things to help us advance those programs and those projects. And we hope that you make, put on your calendar all of the various new things that are going to happen here and around the downtown area. It gives me great pleasure at this time to introduce the Honorable Mayor of the City of Roanoke, Mr. David Bowers. Good afternoon, everyone. And how do you like Elmwood Park? It's great, doesn't it? Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for coming down to Elmwood Park on this mostly cloudy, I see a little sun peeking through just in time for our ceremonies this afternoon. And we're delighted to have all of you here today. And I wanted to recognize some of our uh, elected officials and dignitaries who are here as well. I'm going to ask them to stand when their name is called, but please uh, hold your applause until all are introduced. Uh, I know that our one of our state delegates, Chris Head, is here, and he will be introduced again later. Uh, Rupert Cutler, a former uh, colleague of ours in Roanoke City Council. Sheriff Johnson, at least just hold your applause, if you will, so I can recognize all these folks. Sheriff Johnson is here. Former city manager Jim Ritchie, I see him right out here. Our city manager, Chris Morrill. The chairman of our school board, Todd Putney. And our superintendent of schools, uh, <laughs> <laughs> What's her name? I had a senior moment. The superintendent of schools, and there are other school super, school, I'm sorry, school board people here as well. I'm sorry. I'm just seeing you again. Yes, thank you. Yes, Rita is here. You know, I got to make sure that I got everybody's name on the list before I start introducing. And I, I held until last, folks, my uh, distinguished colleagues from Roanoke City Council. These are the great people that I have the pleasure of representing you, of joining and representing you, the people of Roanoke. And please uh, join me in recognizing also the Vice Mayor of Roanoke, Court Rosen. Make sure I have everybody. David Trinkle, Bill Bestpitch, Anita Price, 
Ray Ferris, and Sherman Lee. And now a nice round of applause for all those people, including Rita Bishop. Okay, and we thank you for being here as we celebrate the reopening of Elmwood Park. The improvements to Elmwood are complete, and uh, if you'll forgive the pun, the city of Roanoke has knocked it out of the park with this one. What do you think? Isn't that great? Let me... I had a chance to visit with some of you in the audience earlier uh, prior to the beginning of these ceremonies, and let me, hear, let, me, let me share with you some of the comments. One of the citizens said, Mr. Mayor, this is awesome. Someone said, very impressed. Someone said, think we've got it. Someone said, gorgeous. And then when I asked one person, what do you think, they just said, thumbs up, baby, thumbs up. So that's great. This park was purchased in 1910 by the city of Roanoke and was last renovated in 1982, that's 31 years ago. Over the years, the park's reputation has grown to become a destination for people from across the region to come and experience our Southwest Virginia culture and enjoy local offerings of music and food. The park hosts more than 50 annual celebrations, outdoor concerts, and film showings. To better accommodate these activities, in 2010, city leaders made the decision to enhance the park and keep the focus as a venue for community events. My special thanks and recognition to Dave Trinkle of our council, who has been a leader in the renovation of Elmwood Park for the last several years. Listening to suggestions and comments from the public and park users, a master design plan was created for park improvements and approved by Roanoke City Council. The city's investment in this project was $7 million, plus $400,000 in streetscape improvements on Williamson Road. Our special thanks to Hill Studio, who, with assistance from Mattern and Craig and Spectrum Design, as well as a number of other local and regional professional firms, provided design expertise for the improvements to the park that you see today. As Steve Bouchour, our Director of Parks and Recreation, said, Elmwood Park was closed in the fall of 2012, just one year ago, and MB Contractors, which is also a local company, went to work reshaping this space into this spectacular place that everyone can enjoy. Of course, none of this could have been accomplished without the hard work and oversight of your Roanoke City Council, our Chief Administrative Team, led by our City Manager, Chris Morrill. City Engineer Phil Shermer and Architect Charlie Anderson and their staff, and Steve Bouchure and his staff, and the Culture Coordinator Susan Jennings, who will oversee the placement of public art along the Art Walk where Bullet Avenue used to be. Improvements, yes, you can applaud that. Improvements include the structure where we are holding the ceremony, this long-awaited amphitheater, Roanoke's new premier outside performance area. The new amphitheater is approximately 5,800 square feet, and the stage area is 2,600 square feet. There's room for about 2,000 people in the seating area, with an additional 2,300 in the other areas surrounding the, uh, the seated area. These interactive fountains, new gateways and entrances, signage and an improved concessions plaza are all included in this new outdoor place. As already mentioned, Elmwood Park improvements will bring the display of public art to its new design with the artwork along Bullet Avenue. Streetscape improvements, ladies and gentlemen, were also part of the project adding a raised and landscape median to Williamson Road to, to provide safety for pedestrians crossing from the parking garages. Landscape has been added with thousands of plants added to reshape and enhance the appearance of the park. And renovations have been integrated with improvements which are planned and you can see are underway at the main library just next door. With this renovated amphitheater, Roanoke will have, a, have created a centerpiece for our downtown, a new and improved community gathering place where residents can come to comfortably enjoy the outdoors. Here, a concert, 
hold celebrations, or spend quiet time. Once again, Elmwood Park Amphitheater will be the premier outdoor entertainment and community venue in Western Virginia. And finally, just before we cut the ribbon, with improvements to come this winter in the Roanoke City Market to be completed by the, for the, in time for the farmers to return in the spring, Roanoke is transforming itself into a walkable city, putting pedestrians first with attractive streetscapes. And downtown Roanoke, where everybody likes to come, will continue to be the star of the Star City. Welcome to Elmwood Park Amphitheater. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to invite the guest here on the stage to please join me for the cutting of the ribbon. One, two, three, welcome back. Ladies and gentlemen, we are a great democracy. And I'm not just talking about our national government, our national, our nation, or our commonwealth. Roanoke is a great democracy, too. Roanoke is our local democracy. And with the active involvement of our citizens, people just like you and me, Roanoke has been named a six-time All-America City. And no other city in America has won that prestigious award as often as Roanoke, Virginia. We have a nationally accredited police department and fire department. In fact, the crime rate in Roanoke continues to go down and has for seven years. We have one of the best insurance ratings, fire insurance ratings, anywhere in the country, thanks to our police and fire. Our schools, under the leadership of, let me get this straight, Rita Bishop, and our school board, with their leadership and the great work of our school teachers in our public schools. The graduation rate in Roanoke has gone up 25 percentage points in just five years. That's remarkable. Thank you, Rita. And as you know, we have safe and beautiful neighborhoods that our citizens take pride in. We have greenways, including that wonderful greenway along the river, and we have 10 miles of mountain trails on that beautiful mountain that sits right here in our, within our city limits, Mill Mountain. And of course, we have that famous star. Roanoke is a great all-America star city because we have as the real stars of our city the people of Roanoke. And to those who can and do make that extra effort to volunteer in our churches, our civic leagues, our city, civic clubs, or with the boards and commissions of city government, it is you who we especially thank and honor today. For we could not attain such great heights, nor be a great local democracy, without you, the people of Roanoke. Please join me in thanking all those many volunteers gathered here today who assist us in making sure that our democracy here in Roanoke works and works well. And now, as part of our recognition of volunteers, it is also fitting to honor our 2013 Citizen of the Year. It's always a difficult decision for the members of the City Council to select that one special citizen because so many of you go above and beyond the call of duty to serve your city and your fellow citizens. I see in the audience at least two former citizens of the year. Everybody knows Pearl Fu and Lee Wilhelm. Will you please stand and recognize Lee and Pearl? Anyone else that missed me? And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to introduce to you the 2013 honoree, the recipient of the Citizen of the Year Award. This recipient has resided in the city of Roanoke for 12 years. This person is a person of integrity and moral character. He 
has demonstrated a passion for higher education and training of a workforce to remain here in the Valley. He is a sincerely dedicated and shows his commitment every day to this community and the Roanoke Valley. And he leads by example, encouraging others to do the same. On behalf of the Vice Mayor and members of Roanoke City Council, I'm pleased to announce that Roanoke's 2013 Citizen of the Year is Dr. Robert H. Sandow. Bobby, will you please come forward and I think you'll need to come this way. Can they come up this way? No. Bobby Sandow, the 2013 Citizen of the Year. Come on over here, Bobby, if you will. And Jane, please come forward. This is his wife, Jane. Hi, Bobby. Was it a surprise? Very surprised. <laughs> Hi, Jane. Was it a surprise to you? No, I've lied a lot the last few days. <laughs> she helped bring him here today for this very special occasion. So I'm pleased to recognize Bobby and on behalf of the city council. I think you may be seated, everyone, if you'd like. And um, I, are your children here as well? Oh, well, there they are right here. Proud children and grandchildren of Bobby Sandell right there. Um, so we're delighted to have you all here. Bobby, as you know, is the president of Virginia Western Community College. How about that? Isn't that a great school here in Roanoke? So we have uh, several um, presentations. Uh, first of all, Bobby, we would like to present this plaque. And there's Bobby Sandell right there on that plaque. What do you think? And this is the Citizen of the Year plaque that will hang in uh, Roanoke uh, City Hall for the next year. The previous recipient, of course, was uh, Reverend Carl Tinsley, who unfortunately passed away. Uh, Bill Lee, Lee Wilhelm, Stan Brakel, Estelle McCadden, Frank Feather, Nancy Ruth Patterson, Nicholas Taubman, and uh, Pearl, I think you're on the other plaque. I think we ran out of space on that plaque. So this is uh, the plaque that will uh, be in Roanoke uh, City Hall. And also, for um, presentation in your home, we want to present this recognition to you as well, designating you as the uh, Citizen of the Year. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, it's customary to present a key to the city. The key to the city is a symbol of a city. It's, it's really our highest recognition, the highest honor that we can bestow on anyone. And it's with great pleasure that I present on behalf of Roanoke City Council and all you 100,000 people of Roanoke, the designation, uh, this designation, this honor to the Citizen of the Year for 2013, the key to the city of Roanoke, to Bobby Sandell. David doesn't like to give up the mic, but I got it from him. <laughs> First of all, I'm very surprised. My wife did keep this as a, as a great secret. Uh, I'm very humbled by this uh, recognition. Uh, we've been in Roanoke now 12 years, going on 13. Roanoke is a wonderful place, a wonderful place to work, it's a wonderful place to play. Uh, we've been around in our lifetime, and nothing is more special than the Roanoke city in Roanoke Valley. And to all of you, you live in a great place. I'm very surprised. I'm very humbled, as I said. Uh, but it's, as the mayor also says, we have wonderful citizens here. And the Virginia Western Community College is, is growing rapidly. Uh, and we are doing all the things we can to move this region forward in workforce and with graduates and other people who take courses at the college. I'm really, I don't usually get nervous, but I'm kind of nervous right now. This is, this is quite an award. Thank you again. Uh, City of Roanoke, thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Bobby Sandell, your 2013 Citizen of the Year. Well deserved, well deserved. 
don't worry, I'm not going to conduct. <laughs> we got a great, a lot of great things here in Roanoke. You know that. And one of the best and most wonderful things we've got going right here is our Roanoke Symphony Orchestra. <laughs> 60 years that the orchestra has been here in Roanoke. 60 years. The first orchestra conductor was Gibson Morrissey, then Jack Molenkamp, Victoria Bond, and the fourth and current conductor of the Roanoke Symphony Orchestra is David Wiley, who has been here for 18 years. Only four conductors in 60 years. I like to kid with David Wiley, my friend, and say, Roanokers tend to, tend to have more of a turnover with mayors than they do with symphony conductors. Here in Roanoke. At any rate, we're very proud of David Wiley. We're very proud that he calls Roanoke home now, and we're very proud of the Roanoke Symphony Orchestra. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome David Wiley and the Roanoke Symphony Orchestra. With joy, excitement, and gratitude, we are here as your orchestra for 60 years, and in this beautiful place, the privilege of collaborating with an amazing ballet company. They will be on in just a few moments, but we will be starting off the first musical performance here in Elmwood with a work that I remember as a young boy growing up. This is the Allegro from the Overture to William Tell, Hi-O Elmwood.